So now that we have our icons created, we need to also create a graph that we will use to display the number of countries that have localized YouTube versions. And so instead of doing an iconic representation of this, we will go ahead and we will do a bar graph for it so that we can learn how to do the graphs as well, which are an important part of creating infographics. So if we were doing this in Illustrator, we would use the graphing tool, but Affinity has not built a graphing tool yet in either the desktop or the iPad version, so we're going to actually have to create this graph from scratch using shapes. There are some graphs that you just wouldn't be able to do this with, and you would need to actually use a graphing tool, either in Excel or a statistical program or Illustrator to be able to get it. But with simple graphs like bar graphs that are essentially just rectangles anyway, we can actually create accurate graphs here in Affinity Designer. And accuracy is the key. We really need to create graphs that represent their proportions accurately or else we'll be displaying misinformation in our infographic, which we do not want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my rectangle tool, and I'm going to create a rectangle. And then in order to get the proportions correctly, this is going to be an overlapping bar graph. So I'll put on the bottom the amount of countries that have localized YouTube versions and that will be overlapping with the total number of countries in the world. So just for now I'm going to go ahead and go to my swatches. I'm going to change this one to gray. So I'm going to go from my palette to the grays palette and I'm just going to choose a gray here. We can change that later if we need to. Now in order to be accurate we're going to need to do some math and math on shapes can be done in the transform panel. So let's go to the transform panel. And we actually want to go ahead and set the height of this to be the same number of pixels that there are countries in the world. And then we'll make the second rectangle for the number of countries that have localized YouTube versions. And we'll set that to be the number of countries that have that in pixel height. And then we can scale them up together, but their proportion will remain completely accurate. So there are approximately 195 countries in the world. I say approximately because of course that's a complicated issue on who considers themselves a country or not. But we're going to go with 195 for now because that seems to be the accepted answer of the United Nations. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So this bar is 195 pixels high. Okay, then we'll go ahead and using our selection tool, our move tool, we will duplicate it by holding down two fingers and dragging. And then we will change its color so we know which one we're dealing with to red. And in the transform panel, we will change its height to 91. And then we will stack that over the top. Like so. So that is fairly simple. We now have an accurate representation between the two. And so now, as long as we scale them together, we can scale them as large as we want. So let's go ahead and group them by selecting them, going up to the Edit menu, and choosing Group. We want them to be grouped so that they'll always stay together, so that they will always be in the correct proportion to each other. OK, so now we can go ahead and we can scale it up. make it easier to see and we can go ahead and we can change the left and right sizes because we don't have any data based on the left and the right we just have data based on the vertical axis so we can go ahead and make this size that we want it to be so it's just very important that we keep their height the same together. So you could create a lot of different types of charts in Affinity Designer, but you just want to make sure that you use the math functions to actually set them up correctly based on the data that you have. And then once you've locked them together, you can scale them as needed to fit inside your infographic and then label them as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and 
create leading lines here. Just going to grab the pen tool and drop a point and drop a point to create a line. Just going to raise the stroke over here just by dragging up on the stroke studio. Go up to 10 ish. And on my stroke here, I've got kind of a rounded cap. If I click off, you can see I've got rounded ends on there. That is done under the stroke panel, under advanced. Everything's kind of boxy here, so I'm probably actually going to go for a more boxy look. Select the line and choose the middle one. Tap off to see how that looks. I like how that looks. So let's say that that's going to be my zero line. And so at this point, it wants to snap into here. I don't want it to be exactly at the top, though, because that's 91. And I want this line to be 100. So we're going to need to go up further. And duplicate it again to create the 200 line just above. where the 195 would be. Then we'll group them all together. And that's how you would make a graph. We still need to add in some text labels here, which we will do in the text video. And the last thing that I'm going to add are just two squares to be the key. So of course I'll hold down one finger to create a perfect square. Get rid of the stroke by hitting the slash icon in the stroke panel. Grabbing my move tool, I'll just duplicate this guy down. Go into the color studio. Just make it the same color as my other bar. Okay, so in the text video, we will add text to this graph to make it make more sense. But before we do that, we will need to actually go ahead and start making the iconic representations with the icons that we've created. So we'll be doing that in the next video.